Hello and welcome back to another exciting episode of Let's Play The Legend of Zelda The Minish Cap. I am Rage Powered Gamer and I will be your host this evening. Last time we climbed Mount Cornell and we made it into the Cave of Flames after we talked to Malari who is now repairing our sword. And now I'm going to hope to finish the Cave of Flames in this episode. So you want to go to the left because there's literally nothing to the right. Once you smack these bob bombs they will... Ow! They will run around. If you can smack them again, they'll stay still. Not easy to do. But if you can get one to bo uh, to get rid of those... That, ah, that bombable wall up top, that's always a good thing. <coughs> Excuse me. Okay, these guys... You may remember versions of them from previous Zelda games. You just flip them with your shield and smack them twice with a sword, and that's all you need to do. Oh, thank you. Thank you, Isla, for telling me to flip them over. And that will give us this treasure chest. And it'll give us the compass, which we won't really need. Okay, these rupees, as you can tell, they look a little suspicious because the middle bottom one is a rupee-like. You will suck your rupees out like one per second. There's different types of them, and it, depending on uh, depending on what rupee it is that they're dangling, that they are using as their bait, that'll be depending. That'll depend how many rupees they suck from you per second. So if you find one that's like a twenty, it'll suck a lot of rupees from you. But at the same time, it generally likes to give you back pretty much as many as you lost, plus a little bit more. But if you can kill them without it sucking any rupees, it'll just give you the bait. So we're just making our way up this way. And this is the wrong way. Ignore that and go to the right. Where we'll find a Helmosaur. Okay, these guys are just annoying. So, Islo says, This might be what the humans who built this mine used to get around in here. Maybe we should hop in. I highly doubt that's what the humans used. However, why not? And then you go whizzing by super fast. And I'm not going to lie, my first time it kind of startled me. And he says, Sweet jumping jellyfish, that was awful. Hey kid, what are you smiling about? I know it was madness to risk our lives in that raggedy human contraption. From now on, let's just stick to our feet. Well, I mean, your feet. <coughs> Excuse me, my throat's just... Well, it's that ease low voice. But I put dedication to that voice. I believe that that's the voice I always used in my head for him because he was so annoying. And, like I've mentioned previously, the little sound snippets that he says kind of reminds me of it. Okay, over here it's... That might be a little bit... E yes, there we go. Oh, and I saved myself a bomb. Make your way to the left. <laughs> now, here we do have to kill these Helmosaurs. I... Oh, yeah, we can suck off their masks with the Gust Jar. I've been playing other Zelda games and watching LPs of other Zelda games, at which point you need a different item to suck off, or to rather snatch the masks from them. So for some reason I had it in my head that I didn't yet have the tool to snag their masks. But... We see something appear, and Isla will say, How interesting! So there is a portal hidden away in here, hmm? Whenever you want to shrink down, just hop up here and press R! I think he means hop up there, but... Yeah, this is kind of an official portal, because it looks like it's made specifically for Minish portalage usage. And... I didn't see an animation for falling down there. I want to see if I can do this again. Because I don't remember there being any that didn't have an animation of you falling inside. Wow! I don't know if that's every version or if that's just the weird one that I have with nothing but those monsters and the Switchblade Switcheroo instead of Possession. I don't know about you, but I think Possession sounds a lot cooler than Switcheroo anyway. Eh, you knew enemies hurt you. Well, we're just gonna come over here as a Minish. They give you these nice little arrows to show you as if you didn't notice 
where to go. And there's the piece of heart. I lied in what a previous episode on accident. I had wrong information. Um, I was wrong. There are not two pieces of heart in every dungeon. There are two pieces of heart in certain dungeons. Um, I believe it's... I believe... Don't quote me on this because now I doubt my own credibility. I'm starting to doubt my own credibility because of having that simple fact wrong. I believe it's Twilight Princess that has a set number of heart pieces in every dungeon. I believe there's at least one in every dungeon in this game, but let's come over here and get a Kinstone piece! <laughs> and Islo says, Oh my, it looks really, really hot in that lava, trust me! Falling into that would be a bad idea, I'm sure you agree. Well, let's hit this switch, open the door. Oh, how did I do that? Oh well. Come over here, you can pick up these. If you really think you're pressed for time, you can just stand on the, uh, the platform that doesn't die and suck them up with the gust jar. But so far, this place is pretty self-explanatory. There's really only one way to go at any given point. Ah, Rolo Bites. I freaking love these guys. Alright. These guys, when you smack them, they turn into a ball. And then you can stand on the ball, push things across the ball. Ow. Oh. Or that works, too. Generally speaking, they're used for holes. I don't think they're used for anything else. But we can't push that block. Don't even try. But we're going to jump in this whirlwind over here. And make Islo look very, very fat. He's like, uh, oh, who's that girl from Willy Wonka and the Chocolate Factory? Was her name Baruka? Yeah, except he's a green berry, not a blue berry. Do green berries? The green berries don't exist. We're going to push this block up. Smack the switch. So we don't have to come back through. And push this little chest on a pedestal. And it'll fall into the hole. And it'll give us a key! Alrighty. Now we're in business. I believe we go back through this way. No. No, I'm wrong again. Wow, I am just an idiot today. Oh, I know exactly where we go. Alright, oh, let's, let's go there now. Let's go there now. What am I? Anyway. I love his little scream. But, oh man, that makes me sound like a pedophile for Link. We're going to come to the left and use our key where we first had the minecart. And smack this, which rotates the, uh, the track. If you've played, I think it's Oracle of Seasons, that's not strange to you. Like, you are not strange to that kind of thing. And, oh, we passed up the piece of heart. Don't worry, we'll get it. I am so OCD when it comes to pieces of heart especially. Pieces of heart and capacity upgrades in Zelda games. But I wish we had an item to flip that cart upside down. If only we had a way to flip that cart upside down. Now down here you see a very incredibly obvious bomb wall. Hopefully you don't miss it. But we're going to bomb it. Obviously. And if you can remember generally where we are, it'll lead us to the piece of heart you got a piece of heart now we have three and I did forget one on the way to Mount Cornell kind of it's one that we can get but don't worry we'll be getting our fourth and extra pieces soon so now we jump down here and what happens I love that semi synchronization here but yeah pretty much as far as I know just smack and smack and smack, and smack. I mean, you can focus on them one by one if you want. Wow, I'm having really bad luck here today. Let's try throwing a bomb. I guess bombs work. Oh wow, just throwing the bomb at them hurts them. That is definitely something I never knew. Alright. Blow up, choo-choos. Yay! That took a little bit longer than it needed to. I might make that quicker. Alright, and here we get the cane of Packy. Cane of Pocky. Cane of Patchy. Cane of Pachy. Cane of Passi. Cane of Paxi? We get a cane. And it's not the cane of Samaria or the cane of Birna, so I'm kind of sad because I loved the cane of Samaria, even though it was practically useless. 
But what it said is... One second. Basically what it said about the cane of Packy Patchy Pocky Pachy. Ooh, Pocky. I want some Pocky now. Delicious Pocky. But uh, basically what it says is it turns things upside down. And apparently turning pots upside down instantly kills them. Or breaks them. So we can flip these upside down if they have spikes. Here's what doesn't make sense. I'm not going to read what Islo says right here because I'm a derp. But for some reason, if you fire into a hole, it'll stay there. And instead of falling into the hole, you'll be shot upwards. But you fall into the hole to shoot upwards. It makes no sense to me. But we're going to come back down here after we created the portal. There's no reason for us to go through that portal. And we're going to flip the mine card. And... Okay. Anyway, enough of that. But we's gonna come over here, and we gonna... We gonna... How... That's not racist, is it? No. Anyway, we got a key. So let's take the minecart. Oh, he left us a rupee. Where'd he leave the rupee? Oh, damn it. Oh, well. Anyway... And we're going to come back down here. I made the bad mistake of making a loop last time. But this takes us down here. And it's I didn't uh, I didn't know which way to leave this at first, but I just left it the way it was because of my Zelda logic when I first played this game. But I found out that apparently, if you switch it the other way, you can't cross uh, tracks as a minish, so you might as well just leave it. Oh, and something that's weird, you can't roll in these pipes. But something I really like as a Minish, you roll. You're just... It's funny, cause I find it very funny, because you just stop and then just burst forward. Rather than normal, where you just speed up a little bit. But we're going to come over here and grow. And you might remember these chasers again from, I believe it was, Oracle of Seasons. And they would, they'll just do kind of... They'll chase you if they see you. Well, if you get in their line of sight. And there's obviously easy ways to avoid them. They give you these nice little blocks. And they're not as vicious as the other ones. Anywho, now we can take this minecart. And then we can smack that all over the floor. And we can come over here where we have four rollabites. As you can see, there are four holes. I recommend just smacking them. And then picking them up. And then throwing them. Don't stick one in that hole up top because it's dumb. Okay, now we can, for some reason, over these holes with spherical fillings in them, drag this thing over. And it seems pretty heavy based on the sound of it. But for some reason, Link can't just throw a rollabite up to smack that lever. He's got to do all that crap and then go over and smack the lever. So now we're going to come up here... And first order of business is to jump down up top to grab a cane stone piece. All right. And then you can use the cane of Packy Patchy Pocky Pocky Chi Pock. The cane of P to jump up and get another cane stone piece, and it's a green one. I believe those are the most common in the game. Um, basically, the way it goes are blue are the simplest designs that fit together. Green are medium. Red are slightly more complicated designs. I mean, it doesn't matter because they still all fit together, but, um, we're going to want to flip this and wait, but, uh, blue kinstone pieces and red kinstone pieces generally unlock the most of things that are important, but there's more green that, from what I've found than any other thing in the game, from it, uh, than any other color, there's more green, but at the same time, green isn't the most important. So, but it's not the most simple or the least simple. We're going to need to come over here and do that. Sorry, I fast-forwarded. My FPS was just kind of dropping there. For some reason, fast-forwarding helps it. But yeah, green kinstone pieces are the ones you're going to want to collect a lot of. Uh, red ones and blue ones, you're not going to see as many fusions for. Definitely going to want to hold on to them. And you can just kind of see what I'm doing here, so... I mean, I don't really need to explain it, I don't think. Alright, we'll come up here. And then we're going to come over to the right first, because I did this in somewhat of a practice run. I just 
yeah, it's it's just a chest, but it's got a green can stump piece, which is very important if you've been listening to me for the last 30 seconds or so. Yeah, I can take some damage. These only take a quarter heart. Screw that. And the boss in this place is just ridiculously easy. All right. You know what to do. All right, now here's a little bit of something new. You have to jump in here and face upwards, so that way we can jump into the whirlwind. Yeah, I find it I find it really nice that they were able to incorporate the cane of Packy Pachi Packy Pocky P into that method. What into that method? What am I talking about? I I find it nice that they were able to incorporate it as something less useless than you can just flip things upside down. Because I do like the whole whole thing. W H O L E space H O L E the whole whole thing. And it's not useless, like say, um, other items in other Zelda games. Cough, cough, Dominion Rod and Spinner from Twilight Princess. But now we're going to come down. I don't hate Twilight Princess. It's one of my favorite Zelda games. However, I do not like the Dominion Rod and the Spinner. They were really cool for the dungeons they were in, but useless after that. And I want to come down here. And don't worry. If you're still flying, you'll kind of float up for a second. But we can get a hundred rupees! Which is awesome! And we're going to jump up here. And then come over here. I still find it funny how we can destroy fire with our sword. But hey, if it works in Minecraft, then it can work in Zelda, I guess. But just generally follow these whirlwinds. Um, except for this one, I believe I want to go to the bottom left. Yes, I want to go to the bottom left. Because I am a treasure chest whore, especially this early in a game when kinstone pieces are harder to come by and the fusions are still plentiful to find. I want to say there's exactly 100 fusions in the game. I'm not exactly sure. But let's take these whirlwinds up to get finally up to our main destination, which is the big key! I... I never got the map for this place. <laughs> and I missed a treasure chest! It's the map. Oh well. Oh wellsies. I don't care. Alright. I don't know how I always miss the map in this place. Alright. That can activate a red portal because if somehow you manage to possibly die on this boss... Well, I take it back. If you use a strategy other than mine or you don't watch me fight this boss, you might be able to die on him. I've lost hearts on him quite easily, but I find the last time through this game, he was just ridiculously easy. I mean, he's one of those bosses where you need to obviously find a vulnerable spot or wait for him to reveal a vulnerable spot. And you found a fairy! This reliable ally will replenish your life energy! Anyway, the... Uh, the points where you reveal a boss's weak point or he reveals them himself, you obviously can only do so much damage. But I find it, like, you know, like the best time possible that you can get is when you kill him or get as the max damage possible each time that he reveals it and you kill him as quick as possible. The first three times that he reveals his weak spot. But he's pretty cool. He's my one of my favorite bosses in the game. So let's be quiet. Well, based on that roar, he's already damaged. <laughs> but you're going to want to just roll around him and smack his back. And that'll hurt him. Just run across and wail on this diamond on his back. And as soon as you stop hurting him, you run off. And you... You can't flip his shell when it's red. Oh, and his head blocks it, if you didn't notice. But here's how you're supposed to do it. You're going to run and wail on the diamond. I don't know why it's being like that. It should have done a lot more damage, but... He should die the next time. That's how it worked last time I fought him. I have a practice file going. I'm playing this, obviously, on computer, if you haven't been able to tell. Um, I'm not using a keyboard, though. I'm using a PlayStation 3 controller. But anyway, yeah, PlayStation 3 controller with a Nintendo game just feels so weird. Okay, run down. Wail on the diamond. He'll roar a few times, and when you can stop damaging him, run up. 
so he doesn't let you fall in the lava. And if you can, just, just cut away all the fire that you can. Just so that way when you're running around him, it doesn't get in your way. But yeah, I'm playing this on a PS3. Uh, PS3. I'm playing this with a PS3 controller on my computer. And my practice file I have going on my 3DS. I love this game so much that I feel like playing it twice at once. And I'm just being retarded. Or stupid. Or I'm being a little bit noobish at this point. Alright, let's see if I can't kill him here. And with enough damage, he dies. Epic. And lava dries up. And you automatically walk to the center. At which point you get the spiky paw print! Actually, that looks like the logo for the space jump in oh, Metroid Zero Mission, my last Let's Play. Um, yeah, it looks like the spiky helmet that I mentioned that you get, which isn't really a helmet, it's the space jump. Anyway, flames bring light to darkness and warmth to all. The fire element is the embodiment of that power. I am aware that I missed the first part of that text. I am sorry. Anyway... We can come over here and get a heart container! Alright, your life energy is being increased and replenished. Now, we're done. And Izlo comes out and he gets to say, Oh, that was hot! It was so hot! I thought my fibers would catch fire! Ah, but it's over now! I suppose we should go back and speak to Malari! As you know, completing a plot event automatically makes time move forward exactly one space. So let's become Minish again. Uh, I want to fuse Ken Stones with Paintball, specifically Malari. However, he says, Ah, wow, that was fast work, but not so fast that I didn't finish your sword. Here, take a look. I call this blade the White Sword. Wow, original, considering the last white swords in the series, all the way back to the original NES one. You got the white sword! It's beautiful white blade sparkles with the light. You can put away your grandfather's sword now. Once you infuse it, infuse it? Once you infuse it with the power of the elements, it will become a sacred blade. The forest elder no doubt told you this part, but if you want to infuse the sword, you must go to the elemental sanctuary. The sanctuary is a strange realm trapped between two worlds. It is the bridge between the minish world and the human world. The door where the sanctuary opens only once every hundred years. You'll find the door hidden within Hyrule Castle. Once the blade <gasps> has been filled with the power of the four elements, you should be able to break the curse on the princess. I know you can do it. After all, you made short work of that human mind. Let me tell you about a shortcut you can use to get down the mountain you'll find right in front of the entrance of the mine you just explored. Just follow that and you'll be down in no time. Good luck! Wow, he talked a lot. I don't remember him talking that much. They really need a short version where he's just like, here's your... where he's just like, here's your knife, bro. No, I... I'd be so mad. But let's come here and unminishify ourselves. Actually, I want to minish myself one more time because I want to see if I can. If. I believe. If you go down. Yeah, here's Malari. But it won't fuse with me, so let's just leave. And unminish ourselves. And. I just want to leave Mount Cornell. Alrighty. Yeah, let's just leave. Nobody wants to see this crap. Alright. I apologize for fast forwarding. I really shouldn't have done that. I've lost I lost some honor because of it. There was a rupee, but I like to kill this guy because he gives you like five. Oh! And I called that sh shoobadoo. Yeah. You wanna get into the library. You do. So bad. I do. I did. I tried to get in the library for so long the first time through the game. But you don't get... You, you're not let into it for the first giant section of the game. And the same goes for the... What's it called? The school. 
But let's come up here to Hyrule Castle where they said we should go, and Ezlo gets to say, Are you sure I look alright? I never know what to wear in a form of locations. Oh, Ezlo. You and your horrible, pointless humor. And your stupid bird beak. Is he a bird? Because, I mean, he wasn't a bird before he was a hat. But he went from Minish to Hat, and Minish are pretty much small humans. So... Rage, look! See how that doorway glows? Could that be the door that leads to the sanctuary? Nobody in the castle seems to be able to, s to see it but you and me. Let's go, quickly! That was a burp. I love the music for this place. The music for this place is so peaceful! And I don't know about you, but for me, Zelda games are journeys. And this is the music that makes me love a section of the game. Like, it's not the music that makes me love it, but it's the feeling of accomplishment you get. Because every time you get an element, you'll come over here. And this is the music that's like, you're progressing. Welcome back, here's your new bit of power. So this is the Elemental Sanctuary, then! This is where we can infuse your blade with the power of the elements! Yes, there seems to be a pedestal for your sword right there in the middle! There! Right there in the middle there! But, like, it was like the, uh... I don't know if there was different music for this place, but, um... The Temple of Seasons and Oracle of Seasons. I've mentioned Oracle of Seasons a lot. Menched? I've mentioned Oracle of Seasons a lot. And that's because it's another one of my favorite Zelda games. I love Zelda! And now we get... The powers of the earth and fire elements have been infused in your blade! Or have infused your blade. Have infused your blade. Really? That's the English they're going with. Anyway, now this appears. <laughs> Let's see if I can't read that tablet for you. Fill your sword with power and walk over the glowing tile. Hmm, perhaps it refers to those flashing spots on the floor around you. Well, what are you waiting for? Try it, Rage. That was a little bit more of an explanation than needed. Hey, Rage, you've gone too far. Just step on the glowing pad. Fudruckers! I am hungry and I would like a hamburger from Fudruckers. I hate Islo. Charge up your gauge. Oh, look, there's a clone of us. Whoa, you just split in two! So this is the power of the white sword. I guess you can double yourself like that any time. I guess you can double yourself like that any time you see those panels. Some of the English in this game, I don't know what it is. It's not bad, I just don't like the way it's phrased. And now we've got to come over here, wait for the cage to fill, and do the same thing to open this door. Careful, though, your ghost person... Your ghost person will disappear when that meter runs out, and it'll run out really quickly if he walks through a solid object, like that. But more on that when it becomes more important. <laughs> more on that later. Alright, well. Let's leave Hyrule Castle. Wow, I've been recording for a long time. Oh. Uh... Oh, I should say what day it is. Nobody cares what day it is, but still. Because I don't upload these as I play them. I must confess, I I always leave a couple Let's Plays. <laughs> One minute while I go find the voice that I used for Vadi. Alright, found it. Interesting. You're the last person I expected to find here. And just as I was wondering who could be behind this, I find my old master. Crap, it's Vadi! Vadi! <laughs> and always, you are dressed in <laughs> the shabbiest of rags. 
My curses are not to be mocked. The one I cast on you is most powerful. No matter what power you wield, you will never break it. You haven't changed in the slightest! I never should have created that cap! It only fueled your insane desires! Fool! I had to grant the wishes of its wearers a spectacular creation. Thanks to you, I have gone from being a meek, minuscule nothing to the greatest sorcerer alive. You cannot stop me now, and I have you to thank for it, my boy. Accept this small gesture of gratitude from me. Wait, buddy! Wait! Yeah, because villains have a great history of listening to people, and crap, look what you did. Well, Blue Moblins. I think I'll deal with this next time on Let's Play Legend of Zelda The Minish Cap. But don't forget... No autographs.